And now to finish this first part of the presentation, I'm going to show you a little video I found on YouTube. decides to work. <laughs> oh, there we go. Built beside the river Danube, the ancient city of Belgrade, modern Yugoslavia's capital, presents a picture of particular interest. For it offers a glimpse of a country in Eastern Europe which is today a focus of curiosity for Western eyes. Streets and buildings indicate recovery from bombardment and occupation in World War II. The market is itself a comment on present conditions. From the peasants who come here to do their shopping, one gets an impression of sturdy types, some recalling the days when Serbia was a separate kingdom. As to clothes, well, they're not too luxurious, are they? But food seems reasonably plentiful. No ration books are necessary at any rate. Marshal Tito, seen here with his dog Tiga, who was with him during the Partisan War in the mountains, is head of the state. His friendlier attitude towards the Western democracies is well illustrated by this interview. It was taken by a movie tone unit specially admitted to Yugoslavia for the purpose. The Marshal, through an interpreter on the right, answers questions put to him by Helen Fisher of United Press. Do you believe there is a possibility of solid agreement between the Russian bloc and the Western countries to remove the present international tension before a war breaks out? I still believe that eventually a settlement will have to be made when there are still hands in the air. Perhaps the settlement will be made in such a way that Moody's side will be completely satisfied with the result. But this will in any case be better than war. Marshal Tito also spoke in English, which he'd studiously learnt for the occasion. He looks to America, of course, for equipment in view of the mounting Comintern threat. Marshal Tito, would you like to take this opportunity when you are appearing before the people of America to give them any special message? Yes, I would take this opportunity to send my greetings to the America's people and uh, plenty this wish also on all these Americas, Americas who have sympathy for a uh, for, uh, free and independent Yugoslavia. To all Germany in America who understand our Trade blockade from the Soviet bloc countries, including Romania, forced Tito to ask the West for financial assistance. Criticisms from the Coming Form also pressured the Communist Party of Yugoslavia to change their policies. At this time, former partisans began to read some of the early works of Marx, particularly those concerning the 1871 Paris Commune <coughs> and Lenin's The State and Revolution. From these sources, they, attack, they attacked the Soviet regime for creating a centralized bureaucratic government that had too much power over the economy. In other words, they accused the Soviet Union of being a state capitalist nation. 
Thus, on the 27th of June 1950, the Federal Chamber passed the Law on the Management of State Economic Associations by Workers' Collectives. This policy introduced worker self-management and decentralization as a way to reduce bureaucracy within Yugoslav society. And now I'm going to read you a little extract from one of the works of Tito collected within the Essential Tito, which I bought from Amazon.co.uk for a penny. <laughs> In here, the great Marshal Tito says, <coughs> The transfer of the factories and mines, etc., to management by workers' collectives will prevent the infectious disease known as bureaucracy becoming endemic in our economy. This disease is carried with incredible ease and rapidity from bourgeois society, and it is dangerous in the transitional period, because, like a squid with a thousand tentacles, it holds back and hampers the correct process and the speed of development. Bureaucracy is among the greatest enemies of socialism, for the reason that it is drawn in unnoticed that very poor of social activity without people being aware of it at first. Oh, good read. So then in November 1952, at the Sixth Party Congress in Zagreb, the Communist Party of Yugoslavia, later the League of Communists of Yugoslavia, declared that that there are many ways towards communism and that individual nations should develop socialism according to their particular circumstances. Moving on to the economy, the state still had the direct control over it in Yugoslavia at the time. A plan was set for 1953 for the next five years. So it was a five-year plan like in the Soviet Union. It gave initiative to the enterprises which worked with the local communes and in the republics. This five-year plan achieved some pos positive results. It did not only achieve its targets much earlier than expected, but also y Yugoslavia experienced a high growth rate during the 1950s. However, contradictions rose to the surface at this point. Real power <coughs> was retained at the federal level. Often the managers were former veterans chosen by the League of Communists of Yugoslavia for their wartime service. <coughs> so the younger generation of better educated workers had to cope with poorly educated bosses who, unlike their counterparts in Russia, had the power to sack employees. They used this method many times to solve problems. This fact, as you might expect, led to unemployment, which reached 7.3% in the social sector by 1962. This forced many people to emigrate to Western, West Germany, and into Sweden. Tito thought that this was going to be temporary. However, not many of the immigrants came back. Also, despite of the success of this five-year plan, Yugoslavia still needed economic assistance from the West, and by 1960 it received 275 million dollars from the Americans. Now here we reach the highest peak of Titoism. In 1961, a new five-year plan was implemented. This time, it introduced market forces within the economy. It was a way to bear the industrial enterprises without changing the socialist <coughs> management structure. And so, in the swinging 60s, the banking system and foreign trade were liberalized, the state allowed companies to compete in the world markets, and the national dinar currency was made convertible. 
the league bureaucrats argued that, that if the workers they argued that the workers if they want to have effective control of the means of production they needed to learn how to do key investment decisions so in other words teetism is just basically bureaucratic market socialism some others will consider it a third way between Western capitalism and Soviet state socialism. Which leads me to this joke. Tito was in his official car and approaching an intersection. The driver asked him, should I take it to the left or take it to the right? Tito's answer was, signal that we will take it to the left and actually take it to the right. <laughs> this five-year plan revealed other internal contradictions. The pursuit of profit and the self-interest of the enterprises made the managers and specialists have more control over the self-management committees. During the 1960s, inequality increased as well between firms, industries and regions. For example, by the mid to late 1960s, income levels in Slovenia were six times greater than those of Kosovo. And so the rich got richer and the workers tended more and more to rely on the specialists and the managers to make profits. The late 1960s and, 19, and early 1970s were marked by rebellions within Yugoslavia which were aimed against market socialism and the lack of democracy within the straight structure. Also, this fragmentation of the Yugoslav industry into thousands of self-managing units generated thousands of self-managing bureaucrats. So, instead of creating less bureaucracy, self-management and market socialism created more bureaucracy. By 1974, market socialism was such a problem for the state that it was eventually abandoned. <coughs> Individual firms now negotiated five-year investment deals with the state. And then in November 1976, a law on associated labour led to the decentralization of decisions at the lowest level. The economy at this point was so dislocated and so bureaucratized that proper decision making and implementation of central planning was virtually impossible. Nothing improved when Tito died on the 4th of May, shortly before his 88th birthday. It was declared declared a day of national mourning, and many world leaders attended this funeral. Transported all around the country. Well, the people to more. Well, this is absolutely incredible. Like, <laughs> I know. That is incredible. Yeah. I know. Because see, they start from Slovenia, they went to Croatia. Probably they continue with Serbia, Montenegro, or something. They just went. To I don't think it went into Montenegro. Yeah, but Serbia. It's a, like a the whole religious how you program uh, relic. Oh, yeah, but. Because we want to be able the same thing. Sandra Bettina was there, Chaisvescu was there as well. Oh, of course. This is the Syrian guy. Yeah, the... Anshwa al-Assad. What was the year? 1980. 1980. 1980, yeah.
Irish left from the Soviet Union came as well. Arafat, yeah. Arafat, that was there. Yeah. Carter came to this. It is Carter, no. I have no idea. Maybe. Who was in 1980? Margaret Thatcher. Thatcher? Fucking hell. Wow.